So get to know me a little bit better. Let's do the Q&A. Hello, 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 and the warmest welcome to today's video. For those of you who haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Nick, fab to have you here. For those of you who have seen my face before, thank you so much for joining me again. I hope you're enjoying my videos. I put out videos roughly three times a week on a range of different topics, anywhere from fashion, it's like more personal topics. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested, then please do head down, hit subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. I love chatting with you all. I'm all about living life loud, and what that means to me is being your authentic self, being proud to be you, and just celebrating who you are. Celebrating yourself and celebrating others. So, we're doing the Q&A today, but before we do, bag of the day, who's shocked? Aspen of London, London tote, just a fabulous, fabulous bag. Love it. Need I say more? I don't. Right, let's get into this without further ado. Thank you so much to everybody who submitted questions. I love responding to you. I'm going to try and keep this concise because I'd like to get all of the questions through in one video. So I'll try and keep this concise. And if I waffle a little bit, well, I guess I can always um, edit it, can't I, to reduce said waffle. So the first question that... I got asked is what are your thoughts on pinko bags? I've never heard of them, have I? I've never heard of them. I'll have a look and I'll tell you what I think in the voiceover. Okay, let's take a little look. Some very nice styles, I have to say. A lot of flat bag styles. I love a flat bag. The hardware's nice. A lot of gold, which isn't my fave, but I like the logo. Oh, this pink. Oh, this pink. The ombre, the chain. Oh, it's gorgeous. How beautiful is that? Oh, that's stunning. That is stunning. What a beautiful, beautiful bag. Oh, that grain, that grey into green as well. Kind of flat bag style. Giving me kind of Dior Caro bag vibes, but for a fraction of the price. The price points seem very comparable to um, brands like Kurt Geiger and Tory Burch. Um, less than Coach, I think. It's, it's similar to Love Moschino with the way that they've quilted some of the bags. And that, that's what it reminds me of a little bit, Love Moschino. But beautiful colours. Very nice flat bags. And I really love this logo. That pink is beautiful. I love this logo. I think it's fabulous. It just adds a bit of visual differentiation. Is it two birds kind of kissing, coming round together and kissing? That kind of graffiti version is very nice with the pink. It's all very, very pretty, isn't it? Simple, but still got a pop. You could wear these in the day. You could wear them in the evening. And the price point's really reasonable. I then what's the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? One foot in front of the other. One foot in front of the other. It's when I've been in my hardest times, I've always just said, I don't need to worry about what's, you know, a week in front of me, a month in front of me. Just think about what is dead in front of me. Think about each step at a time. Why are you three steps ahead? Figure out what's directly in front of you, then the rest will figure itself out one step at a time, one moment at a time. And it's the advice I always give people whenever I can see somebody struggling or I can see someone's having a bad day. I'm like, take a breath, one foot at a time, one step at a time. So it, it's something that's always stuck with me. Okay, I did two posts on Insta. Right, okay. What's your favorite handbag? Also, what's your holy grail bag? So if we're talking favourite handbag from my particular collection, it's not my most expensive, but I don't think it's obvious shock to anybody. My Longchamp Le Pliage Club medium top handle in the fuchsia. This is a 30 centimetre bag. Um, I prefer larger bags on the whole, but this bag is very sentimental to me. I love the colour. I love the shape. I love the ease of it. It's just a fabulous bag and this scarf, is, is just an absolute ray of sunshine wrapped around it. So I adore that particular bag. Let me put it back. There we go. And my holy grail bag would be a Birkin 35 or a Birkin 40 in crocodile or alligator in a hot pink. Um, that would probably be my holy grail. Uh, will I ever own it? No, but we can dream, can't we? So yeah, that's what I would say that. Um, 
What do your colleagues think of your online persona? Do they know? I'm going to answer one of the YouTube questions actually before I answer this. So people ask me what I do for work. That always comes up um, and I see it comes up a lot on other YouTubers Q and A's as well. And I think it's partly because I'm assuming it's because people are just curious of what do you do to be able to kind of acquire the things that you have and for me a lot of it is just about prioritization um i don't travel a huge amount for example um you know there are other things that i kind of sacrifice in order to be able to carry a designer handbag um what do they think um they do know i've, I've referenced the fact that i do youtube i know some of them watch and i know some of them enjoy it but it's not something that i kind of overly promote to them um it's more where I've got colleagues on social media because they've become friends. They know. Um, but it's not something I overly, overly talk about. Um, but hey, it's out there on the internet. So if anybody wanted to. But I don't have an online persona. What you see in front of you here is who I am as an individual. So no one would watch my videos and feel like they were watching a different person. I am who I am. I don't really have the ability capacity to switch things on and off um it's probably something that i need to work on um to have that kind of boundary i guess between the two things but what you see is what you get with me my personality is my personality and it, it yeah it seems to work for me so far so that's all i'm going to worry about there now let's get on to the YouTube questions. Oh, I didn't actually say what I did, did I? <laughs> I started going off about why people asked the question, but I didn't actually say what I did. I work for the UK head office of a global automotive company. That's what I'll say there. Okay, first question from the YouTube page. Many YouTubers have used the terminology purse piece to, uh, to signify they have reached a level of satisfaction in their bag collection. Have you ever felt you've reached purse piece um, with a particular brand design house? Do you think you ever could see yourself, for example, no longer purchasing Le Pliage bags? I don't think I can. I think our collections will always evolve as our tastes are ever evolving. I could not agree with you more. Could not agree with you more. I think that your taste is always evolving, your interests evolve, your lifestyle changes. So what you need changes. You know, there might, I'm a top handle bag person. There might become a point in time with my life where the backpack needs to be my primary bag, for example. I don't know what that is, but that could be the case. There might become a point in time that, you know, oh, that's gonna fall. My smaller bags might become more um, usable for me or the flat bags might not be as usable. I don't know. I've never experienced that feeling of kind of purse peace. I don't believe in it, if I'm honest. Um, I don't believe in it. I really don't. Um, it's great to be content with what you have, but I don't believe that that someone gets to a point in time where they go, I'm never going to buy another thing. I will just keep this like this forever. You won't. I'm sorry. You won't. You might for a year. You might for five years. Not forever. Sorry. I agree with I agree with you that we're forever evolving. Can I ever see myself not purchasing Le Pliage bags? Absolutely not. I will always purchase Le Pliage bags. Even if I stop buying like top handle styles, for example, I'll always buy travel bags, etc. The Le Pliage is a forever bag style within my collection. Regardless of the derivative, I will always buy Le Pliages as long as they continue to make them. It's the biggest influence for your style. When did you start wearing heels and did you practice a lot or were you a natural? Love the videos, they're so much fun to watch. Firstly, thank you, that's very, very kind. Um, biggest influence on my style? I don't have an influence on my style. Um, I don't really know many people who dress like me and I dress dependent on my mood. I dress dependent on the situation. So it depends what day you catch me on. Um, you know, a few days ago, I was wearing a full suit with black lace-up shoes, a very conservative look, um, because I just, the mood just struck me that day. Today, I was wearing a pink blazer. Like, it just depends on what mood I'm in as to what I decide to wear. I have no influence. I look at clothes and I think, do I like it? Yes, I'll pair it with something. If you, if you know someone who dresses similarly to me, let me know. There's a probably celebrity-wise, maybe someone like Adam Lambert, tends to dress a little bit more like me, but probably Prince. Of course, I'm aware of the fact that very sadly, Prince is no longer with us, but I mean back when he was alive. You know, those quite sort of eccentric, extroverted individuals, I would say, but they don't necessarily influence or inspire the way that I dress. 
but I would say if I was to draw a point of comparison, they might be closest in terms of comparison. When did I start wearing heels? I bought my first pair of heels about four years ago, but my friends will tell you, I always just used to walk around on my tiptoes. I don't know why. I always used to walk on my tiptoes and it used to slightly freak people out because I can step really high on my tiptoes um, without any support under my heel and I can walk like that. So people used to find it a bit strange that I could do that, but it's really helped me when it comes to wearing heels um, because I'm used to not, I'm used to being able to walk without a support on my heel. So therefore put a heel under it, regardless of how thin it is, it's extra support over and above what I would be able to walk on. So probably about four years ago was when I got my first pair. Um, I started wearing them, I would say more readily and more regularly two years ago. Yeah, about two years ago, I would say. And I love them. I love heels. Mm. This is one of my favourite pairs. Only makeup. I love those heels. Okay. What is your favourite season? Do seasonal changes affect your mood and or bags fashion choices beside the obvious needs for more or fewer layers? Um, I don't have a favourite season, if I'm honest. Um, I actually... Maybe spring, maybe spring, um, kind of like April time. I quite like that because it tends to be warmer and a bit sunnier, but not too warm. And yeah, I like it. Does it affect my choices of, of kind of clothing and accessories? No, it doesn't. I have the same wardrobe. I might rotate some of the items. Like I might put away shorts and when do you ever see me wear shorts? But, you know, you might put away shorts and then pull out a few winter coats. But on the whole, my style is my style. And I am that person that will wear a blazer in 35 degrees because it completes the look. I will wear a scarf in 35 degrees because it completes the look. I'm all about the look. So it doesn't matter what season we're in. I'm completing the look. Um, so yeah. But does it affect my mood? Yes. Yes. Um, I am someone who needs to get sunshine. I need to get, is it vitamin D? Um, I, I need that. So I can, I can become a bit of a dragon if I've been inside for too long. It's been cold. It's been wet. It's been dark. Oh, miserable. I don't like that. I like it to be bright. So maybe, uh, yeah, maybe spring, kind of spring, summer. That's probably my favourite. How do you store your bags? How often do you change them? And do you use organisers? How do I store them? Ta-da! Um, I have a storage cube. Um, I have some in dust bags in my wardrobe. I have some that just kind of sit on the floor, but I regularly kind of rotate them just to make sure that they don't get indented or damp or anything like that. I clean them frequently. Um, I recently just did a leather treatment on every single one that I own. I leather clean them and then did a leather treatment on every single leather bag that I have. So um, that, that's something that I try to do quite regularly. Did it with my shoes as well. Um, but I like to be able to see them. If, if I don't have them out, I just won't grab them. I'll forget about them, if I'm honest. So I also try to rotate into the cube bags that I haven't used very frequently so that when I walk past them I almost feel a bit guilty and I think oh I should use that it doesn't work for all of them but you know I try how often do I change them daily if not twice a day dependent on what I'm doing so if I'm at work during the day I might have this for example then let's say I'm going out for dinner I might grab this and change into that so I will change my bag minimal minimum daily and then sometimes twice a day, depending on what I'm doing. Do I use organisers? Yes. For any bag that can have an organiser, I put an organiser in them. I do not buy these 200, 300 pounds, 7RP inserts and these fancy inserts. I buy mine from Amazon. I am perfectly happy with them. They fit the bags well. They do what they need to do. They keep the structure. They keep the shape. If anything spills, the organiser absorbs it and it was £10. So you, I might eat my words down the line. You will never see me pay for a fancy insert. Let's say that. Never, never, never. Okay, what's one bag you'd give yourself a cheat pass for, i.e., Give up one of your others for. Now, this is a really interesting one because the bag that I would 
switch, if I was given the option, I wouldn't switch it for a different bag style. I would switch it for the same bag in a different print. My MCM Aaron Shopper. I love this bag. I've spoken about this before. Anyone who's been on this channel for a while knows how much I love this. I would swap this particular version, which is in the Logo Glitch um, print, for the graffiti that's currently available because the graffiti has nylon um, instead of this canvas. So I think the pouch, when you remove it, will be more usable. Um, I love, I love, love, love the style with the PVC and with the long shoulders. So I wouldn't switch this out, for example, for a Chanel Deville. Um, I would happily keep the MCM style. I just wish I could have it in the graffiti. And I'm going to keep my eyes peeled to see if that goes on sale or, or anything like that, because it's a reasonable price point as it stands. It's about £700. But if that were to hit, for example, a 30% off sale, I would 100% go for it because I would use it. I would use this bag and that bag. So this is the one that I would give myself a cheap pass for to switch out for another variation of this particular bag. I hope that makes sense. Good morning, Nick. Good morning. What do you think about the new Longchamp water bottle and bag? I'm thinking about getting the Kelly green or the brown. Please share your thoughts on the colours. Thank you. Let me have a little look here. For anybody wondering what that writing is on my hand, that is the office coffee order. I'm not a real fan of pen and paper. Pen, write it on your hand. There you go. Oh, it's cute. Oh, that is so adorable. What colours were you thinking? So you were thinking the green or the brown. Okay, firstly, it's adorable. I mean, do you get the do you get the water bottle as well? You get the water bottle too. Okay, I mean it's still a lot of money. It's £140. So but it's cute and it's a little crossbody thing. And if you use it and you're going for walks, etc go for it. I think it's cute. Colour-wise, my personal preference would be the green, but only because I've seen this green in person and it is so beautiful. Um, but funny, I don't love the bottle as much. I mean, if it were my choice entirely, I'd get the black because I actually really love the bottle that that comes with, and I love the um, the green stripe down the side of it. I would go for the black if it were me. I also really love the orange. Um, the brown is my least favorite, I would say. For me, it would go black, green, orange, brown. But it's cute. I like it a lot. It's nice. Why not? Why not elevate everyday experiences and get a Longchamp water bottle? Maybe I need a Longchamp water bottle. Maybe I could get the bottle separately because I don't want the bag. I wouldn't use the bag. But the, the bottle, I could use the bottle. Yeah, it's cute. Okay, I was asked, why is Longchamp a fan favourite in Europe? Why would Longchamp not be a fan favourite in Europe? Longchamp, I think, is a fan favourite in Europe because... It's a long-standing French heritage brand. It was conceived in 1948. Um, it's a very elegant, timeless, chic brand um, at a really reasonable price point. Their nylon range is exceptional value, I would say, as mid-range luxury pieces go. Their leather pieces are also exceptional value because I think their most expensive bag is about 800 pounds in full leather, exceptional quality, French fashion house, beautiful, but it's just a very elegant and sophisticated brand. They do slightly bolder versions, they do monograms, but they also do these beautiful, very simple, very subtle pieces as well. But it, like I said, it still has that heritage and I do feel that people gravitate towards the French fashion houses, they those luxury fashion houses. Anything that has something Paris at the end of it, immediately I think it oozes glamour. And Longchamp is a glamorous brand. The staff are incredible. I don't really know many people that have had a poor experience. I've had a slightly iffy experience once 
but I've been a customer of theirs for many, many years, had one not so great experience and they did everything they could to remedy it after the fact. So I can't really complain there. It's a fabulous brand. Also, they are just so easy to use, particularly the Les Pliages. So you will often see Les Pliages in shoulder bags opposed to the top handles. I'm a top handle fan, but I tend to see the shoulder bags because they're just throw on and go. They're water resistant. They can be rained on and they're not going to get ruined. You can put other bags in them if you wanted to to stop those getting ruined. They can be great work bags. They can be great day bags. They just go with everything. They are so simple, but so effective. So I think there's a lot of reasons why it's a fan favourite. It is a absolute favourite of this particular channel. And I know it's a favourite of a lot of yours. Longchamp is a brand that in all honesty, I'm so in love with, I don't see the need to step much outside of it. It's the reason I don't buy Coach. It's the reason I don't buy Tory Burch. Because for every Coach bag I see that I like, I like three Longchamp ones. So I'll just keep buying from the brand that really resonates with me. And that's not saying that Coach isn't a good brand, because I see a lot of discussion about Coach. And I think they have some really nice pieces. But I just have this affinity for Longchamp. And I, I can't explain it. Um, uh, Dale did a video uh, probably a month or two ago about kind of her almost like bias towards Fendi. I completely understand it because if Coach and Longchamp were to bring out the exact same bag, the exact same bag and just have a different logo on it, I know I'd gravitate towards the Longchamp one. I know I would. It's just, it's just my preference and I, I can admit that. So I, th I think it's just a fabulous, fabulous brand. Oh, funny. What do you think of the Harry Meghan drama? I only mean the question in a fun way. No need to answer if you're not comfortable. Um, <laughs> I do not pretend to be a royal correspondent by any stretch. Do I feel that as people, you should be allowed to duck out? Um, yes, I think so. Do I wish maybe the exit hadn't have been the way that it was? Yeah, yeah. However, do I believe that if that's the best thing for them and their family, that they should be allowed to go and live a life elsewhere, away from the public eye, away from public scrutiny. Yes, I believe so. Like I said, I just wish the exit had been a little bit different. Um, but I, I think that, yeah, who knows? Who knows? I know people have a lot of really strong opinions on it. Personally, I'm not really one of them. Hi, any recommendations for wallets and card holders? Thanks so much. Um, well, firstly, hi. Um, secondly, wallets, card holders. My favourite brands to buy wallets and card holders from are Osprey London because they are durable at a very good price point and they are simple and sophisticated. I love Aspinall. I think Aspinall is fabulous, particularly with the mock croc that they do. And I'm a lover of mock croc. So I think Aspinall does some beautiful pieces. Kurt Geiger is another brand that does wonderful SLGs. I've had one of my Kurt Geiger card holders for circa four years. Okay, it doesn't look like new, but it's holding itself together incredibly, incredibly well. And I, I think I paid £39 for it. So it was a really good value piece. If I was to ever go for luxury um, SLGs, I would probably consider Mulberry SLG so that it matches pieces that I've got. Or I would consider Louis Vuitton canvas um, SLGs as well. Um, but my primary, whenever I think, oh, I'd like a new card holder, I'd like a new wallet, I'm looking at Osprey London, I'm looking at Aspinall of London, and I'm looking at Kurt Geiger. Those are my three. I don't own a Longchamp card holder. I don't own a Longchamp wallet. Um, no particular reason. I just don't gravitate towards their SLGs in the same way. Um, yeah, that's that. What do you have planned for Halloween? What are your favourite bags to use for fall? And are you planning on getting any new bags and heels? What do I have planned for Halloween? I think I have a Halloween party to go to, but we'll see. Um, Halloween's a Monday this year. So it depends if I decide to go to the thing the weekend, um, the weekend before. Um, but I love to dress up. I think it's really good fun. Um, what are your favourite bags to use for fall? Oh. All of them. 
all of them. But I do think that bags, for example, this will be a really good bag to use for kind of those colder, wintry months. This is another really good one as well to use through that period of time. Uh, my MCM Aaron Shopper, my Louis Vuitton Noé, I can see getting quite a lot of use for a bit of fun. I can see this also getting used because the nylon being a bit more kind of water resistant. I think that will get used. My Nile Mulberry Bay's water, but probably take this off so that doesn't get ruined. But I think this will probably get a fair amount of use. Um, this is quite an autumnal bag, um, a long shot piece. But then, of course, if you just fancy throwing caution to the wind and you want a pop of colour, why not? Leather, easy to use. I clean it regularly. It's a beautiful bag. Why not on one of those cold, dreary winter's mornings where you just think, I just need some sunshine. Sunshine. And then the final part of that question was, do I plan on buying any bags and shoes or bags and heels? Um, I am still debating whether or not to buy a pair of so capes. Um, I didn't get to try any on when I went to Selfridges um, last time. Uh, the Louboutin store was quite busy um, and I didn't want to feel kind of hemmed in whilst trying to make a decision. I was rushing a little bit as well because I had somewhere to be. So I'd like to go back when I have a little bit more time, possibly on a weekday, just to kind of take my time thinking about it. But I'm thinking still a pair of Socates. In terms of bags, I am debating, there have been a couple of Fendi peekaboos that have come up on the pre-loved market um, that I'm debating. So I'm thinking maybe a peekaboo. And of course, my personalised Longchamp is still yet to arrive. So that will feel like it's new. Although I ordered that three or four weeks ago um, and I paid for it, I will feel like it's a new bag because I haven't seen it and I'm really excited to see it because all I've seen it on is a little thumbnail. Um, so I'm really, really excited. Then the final question that I got was what do you do for work? I've said that I work for the UK head office for a global automotive manufacturer. So there we have it, everyone. Thank you so much for your questions. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. I love answering your questions. I appreciate you taking the time to ask them. And I hope this means that you get to know the person behind the camera a little bit better. But thank you as always for watching. And I look forward to seeing my next video. Take care, everyone. Bye now. Mwah.